It's an economic summit on a woman's place. On this edition, I talk to a money coach and a coupon diva, and they share with us some tips on how we can make our money go farther. I'm Angela Harrington Rice, inviting you to join us. Nakia, thanks so much for being here on A Woman's Place. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I was very interested to find out that there are money coaches and wanted to find out exactly what a money coach does and how a money coach can help us during these economic times to make our money go a little bit farther. Okay. Well, the beauty of a money coach, and it is a relatively emerging new field, is that money coaches are available to persons that are having difficulty finding a healthy relationship with their money. And so what we do as money coaches is we help persons that um, are, are struggling go in deeper in terms of what is emotionally going on and cognitively going on with their finances. Um, so there's a quantitative side to money coaching and what I do is also help um, persons explore on a deeper level what unconscious um, material they're bringing from their past is also affecting their relationship with their finances. Yeah, one of the things that I know from reading books um, uh, on financing, mm -hmm. um, I can't, it's one book that I, I've liked a lot, but it talks about, you know, how we grow up with these different belief systems about money, you know, and how a lot of times for us to have a better relationship with money, we have to go and investigate that and get rid of it, you know. We do, and, and oftentimes people are not even conscious of that. Mm -hmm. It's not something we necessarily talk about a lot, but what we are finding is that um, it's certainly something that's inherited from your parents, sometimes mm -hmm. even just media um, influences that affect your relationship and your belief system when it comes to how you handle your finances. So if I change my beliefs, does that mean that more money will come, or it, does it mean I just handle it differently? Well, a little bit of both, okay? okay? Because sometimes if you have certain beliefs, you, um, we're finding that people um, block the influence of money come into their lives because mm -hmm. they're not necessarily handling their finances appropriately. Okay. Okay, so that could, if your belief system could block those, those monies coming into your life. So what are some of the beliefs or some of the common beliefs that you hear from people that you think may be damming up the flow of money? Okay. One belief um, that is detrimental is money is bad. Believe it or not, people actually believe that. Mm -hmm. Money is bad, so therefore I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to talk about it. Um, it, it comes into my life, but I use it for th that sole purpose. And so therefore, because the influence of money is bad, they don't necessarily have a balanced relationship necessarily with, the, with their money. Okay, so some people, and I, I remember growing up hearing money doesn't grow on trees. Money doesn't grow on trees, that's you know, a good one. So it means that, you know, money is not ever available, you know, yeah. and, um, and then one of the things, um, you know, I can never keep money. I mean, these mm -hmm. are the things I know that we say to ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it takes money to get, I mean, so it's so many things that we do say. Right, and, and certainly are not even conscious of it. Money does not grow on trees. So therefore, um, if it's not readily available to me, then I won't ever have it. I won't ever have the wealth mm -hmm. um, that is due to me. Necessarily. So if you believe that you'll never have wealth, how, what, how does that actually um, play itself out in one's life? What well, inhibits people mm -hmm. from growing? If you can't visually, I tell my clients all the time, if you can't visually see yourself um, being resourceful or having um, some type of savings in, in place or having some type of um, being in the, having the ability to grow a business, for example, if you can't visually see it, how are you going to get there? Mm -hmm. If you can't um, map it out in your head first, then how are you going to walk along that path? You're mm -hmm. going to basically walk along the path blindly. And sometimes you, you won't even necessarily believe that you're capable of getting there. Mm -hmm. I, I work with clients all the time that say, well, I don't, I don't think that I'll ever have money. My, my parents didn't have money, so why will I have money? Mm -hmm. You know, I make a good income, however, but, you know, I, I still live paycheck to paycheck. And so they don't have the vision that they, that's needed to necessarily walk along that path. But when they're able to unblock that, um, whatever is holding them back, 
they're able to, to walk along that path and, and actually visually see that, you know what, I'm capable of doing just as well as the next person. Mm -hmm. What about women? Do women have any particular issues? Because I think about, you know, we like to shop a lot more than a lot of men do. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> and I hear women often saying, I probably say, you know, I can't keep money, you know, or uh -huh. money burns a hole in my hand. Mm -hmm. You know, these things mm -hmm. that we say because once we get the money, it's like, oh, it's time to go to the mall. You know, we, we, we kind of have that thing that, Spending money is our reward for working or our reward for being a good mom or whatever. So we reward ourselves by, um, as my girlfriend says, by retail therapy. Yeah, I, I hear that a lot too. I had a little bit of retail therapy today, you know, and, um, and then I say, well, how did you feel after you came home and you had all these bags sitting around you and you looked at your bank account and you, you know, there was not that much more mm -hmm. money left over to, um, after the fact. So yeah, we use that sometimes as women as to relieve the stress that we have in our lives. And that can be unhealthy because there's, as with any, I don't want to necessarily call it an addiction, it is for some people, mm -hmm. not for everyone. But as with most things, if you don't sit back and look at the consequences beforehand, you have to suffer them after the fact. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that doesn't necessarily bring on, on good feeling. Well, what are some of the things that you suggest that people do? Now, one thing I've heard is, you know, we need to change our beliefs about money mm -hmm. and we need to visualize ourselves as having what it is that we desire and knowing that right. we can we can save money, knowing that we can um, generate more in a, in, um, income. What are some of the other things that you express or you work with your client base on? Well, the initial process, I believe, um, uh, sometimes coaches want to start with a quantitative quantitative side of mm -hmm. let's do a budget plan okay. so on and so Ooh, forth budget. yeah okay <laughs> that's that's all good and dandy yeah. you know but we find that you know most people can learn to do a budget however they don't stick uh -huh. to a budget or they don't attend to that budget so where I like to start with my clients is let's first explore you know your history mm -hmm. let's go on a deeper level to figure out what's been um, guiding you into a path of destruction when it comes to your finances. Um, let's bring up some of that unconscious stuff that's been getting in the way. Those are the beliefs. Once you are aware of that and, there's, and you bring that to your, uh, on a conscious level, you're able to implement the tools around, okay, catching that, catching your belief system, reframing them, mm -hmm. those thoughts that are, are necessarily negative that may get in the way such as um, money grows on trees, mm -hmm. we all know that, that that doesn't necessarily happen. Um, and you can also begin to do the step-by-step the -step process of visually seeing yourself get there, coming up, implementing a plan. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about journaling, journaling about the feelings that come up for you around managing your finances. Sometimes people have anxiety mm -hmm. that comes up for them. Sometimes um, people, uh, there are a vast of other emotions that may present themselves around finances that if you're not able to be in tune with them, you don't know. So once you're able to say, okay, I'm going to be conscious about this on a day-to-day -day basis so that I get more in the habit of being aware. And when I'm aware, I know I can come in and step in and say, okay, I need to shift my thinking on this and I need to do something. I, I need to do the opposite of what I used to do because mm -hmm. it certainly wasn't working for me. Yeah, and I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've started replacing um, using my debit card with cash. Yes. Because one of the things that I realized about the debit card is that, particularly in a, in a day or a week's time, I didn't really know how much I'd spent before. Yeah. Because I wasn't keeping track of it. Right. You know, and so with money and when I'm spending cash, you know, I know I have $3 left. Absolutely. You know, I know that I've spent $65 or, you know, but with a debit card, I could spend like $300 and be kind of mindless that I've uh -huh. even spent the money. Cece took ignore. Oh, it, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But it did. And even with, with using cash, I always encourage people also to keep an itemized journal of what they're spending their cash on mm -hmm. as well. You know, because you're right, you can look at your purse at the end of the day or your wallet mm -hmm. and say, well, I only have $3 left. Mm -hmm. But you probably, if say, for instance, you begin with $100. Okay, where did that money go to? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, were there any frivolous, frivolous, uh, sorry, frivolous charges that were, you know, made during the day? So that's yeah. a good thing to do. Yeah.